Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. about the simple algorithm further in this lecture. So, we were already discussing about the staggered grid and its application in the simple algorithm. So, we continue our discussion on the simple algorithm. So, last time we had already started discussion on discretization of the x momentum equation. Let us come to the point where we find a way to discretize say v u at the point n u. So, you can write it as v n u star times u at n u and let us see how we compute v n u. Let us make a small sketch. So, we will draw it this way. So, you have P i j here, P i plus 1 j here, you have u i plus half j and then remember that this is the point n u. So, how do we try to work out v at the point n u? Now, v i j plus half is available here and v i plus 1 j plus half is available over here. So, you may recall that the v control volume was drawn like this, staggered towards the y direction by half cell height and the u control volume is staggered along the x direction. So, if this is the v control volume corresponding to i j plus half, the next one would be somewhere here and that is nothing but v i plus 1 j plus half. So, it is a little tricky to identify all these staggered cells, but it is a matter of habit. So, now we see that the point n u lies exactly in between this uh, i j plus half and i plus 1 j plus half and therefore, we can conveniently approximate v n u star as v i j plus half plus v i plus 1 j plus half by 2. Once you have this, you figure out whether V n u star is positive or negative. Remember that if V n u star is positive, what does it mean really? It means that at the point n u, the V on an average is moving towards the upper direction on an average because you have done a linear interpolation that kind of averages the neighboring values. So, on an average the velocity has a tendency to move towards positive y direction. If it is negative, it is tending to move towards the lower direction, the negative y direction. Now, why does it affect us? Of course, it does because that would decide how you would get transported, how you would be carried by this direction of v. So, as though a positive v advects u i plus half j to a point n u, if I am using first order of point. Let us say if you have v n u star as positive, that means you have an average movement towards the upper side and you are using first order upwind to approximate the u at the point n u, then how will v assist 
the transport of u, the advection of u. It will actually transport u at the point i plus half j to the point n u. That is how the advection will take place because it is assisted by the movement of v. So, v n u star greater than 0 basically means that u at the point n u, if I am using a first order upwind, will be represented as u i plus half j. This is how it will work out. Okay? Similarly, if it is less than 0, what will happen? You will actually get the u from the upper side getting advected to the point n u. What is the u from the upper side? It is the u existing here. So, that is u i plus half j plus 1 that will get advected towards the point n u. Of course, this is one of the more simpler schemes with a lot of artificial viscosity. You can of course, go for more advanced schemes, but then you would actually have to bring in more number of u values from different neighboring points coming into your formula. Right? If you imagine applying quick over here for example, there will be values of u coming from three different grid points in order to approximate your u and u. So, you have to recollect all the schemes that you have learnt in the one dimensional advection diffusion chapter, so that you can now judiciously use it for approximating the values of velocities at different points like this. So, this way we are able to approximate the v u at the point n u by using different schemes. We have just shown it for the first order upwind. Now, this is as far as the advection term is concerned, which is the more difficult term to handle. Viscous terms are of course, easier. For example, del u del x at the point E u, you can easily check that it will be defined by this and del u del y at the point n u will be defined like this. So, it would be a good homework to work out the remaining terms later, so that you have a firm understanding of how the discretization process is going on. Now, one more thing that I need to uh, mention at this point is that in the previous slide, wherever we had mentioned about the star quantities, these are essentially used for interpolating neighbor velocities in order to estimate whether you have a positive or a negative value over here, based on which you apply the different discretization schemes here. So, we will try to absorb all these star quantities into coefficient terms, which will come up soon. So, just keep it in mind that the star quantities will actually contribute to coefficient terms in the transport equation, which we will try to write next. So, coefficients are nothing but the A terms that we had used in the one dimensional advection diffusion equation also. So, in those A terms, these star quantities are going to contribute. So, if you discretize all the terms of the x momentum equation, you can finally write the equation like this. So, the equation will look like this. This is of course, for the u control volume itself and these are the contributions coming from the neighbors. So, all the neighboring cells 
u values will also contribute right so they will be expressed in the form of a summation so what do we have for each term we have a coefficient which is the weightage essentially times the velocity and everything is centered around the u control volume so we write the a for the u control volume times the u control volume velocity equal to the summation of the coefficient terms times the u coming from all the neighboring cells and as i said earlier that all the star quantities would get absorbed here and therefore you would not see any v terms coming up over here because it's essentially u that is being transported right and you finally have the pressure gradient part coming up over here and momentum sources coming from boundary cells like what you have seen even in discretization of one dimensional advection diffusion equation that source terms are generated as you move to the boundary cells right okay so in this manner we are able to discretize all the things in a similar way the y momentum equation would also be discretized which will finally give rise to a form like this so the y momentum equation uh will be discretized on the v control volume and therefore we have the v control volume mentioned in the source terms or the coefficients that are involved again here you can see the that the form of the discrete equation is very similar to what we have for the u control volume now coming to the core part of the simple algorithm we try to guess a pressure field let us say we guess it as p star then we discretize the x and y momentum equations using the value p star which will give you a i plus half j u i plus half j but with a star because with the guess of the pressure field you are also going to get a guess of the velocity field you don't know whether this is the correct value so you may actually have to do some iterative calculations before you reach the correct value so we'll express it as a guessed value of u field no change occurs to the source terms because they are coming from constant values at the boundaries similarly you write down for the y momentum equation which is for the v control volume again because we are using an estimate or a guess we assign star quantities to the v's now let us say that the correct pressure is indicated by p now that p would have to come from p star only but with a correction so p star is essentially an estimate or a guess and p dash is essentially a correction which gives me the correct or converged pressure and if you have a correct pressure you should also simultaneously have correct velocities 
correct in the sense that this velocity field would be divergence free. That means, this, this would satisfy the equation divergence of velocity vector v equal to 0. Now, these are the estimates and these are the corrections. These are the guess values or estimates. Right. Now, let us say if you are taking a difference between the converged values and the estimates, you will get an equation of this form. Now, you do not know what the converged value is, but you can of course, write it down in an equation form and express it. So, what we have written is, we have written an equation where the difference between the correct value and the guess value is being taken. So, they are being subtracted. If you do that, what will that equation provide you? it will provide you an equation in terms of the corrections that means the dash quantities so if you notice carefully every term has a difference and that difference is essentially between the correct value and the guess value that means you have written down the equation in the correct form you have written the equation in guess form and then taken a difference so what will a term like this yield, this would yield u i plus half j dash, because that is the correction. Similarly, these would be u n b dash and so on. So, let us replace them with all dash quantities and if you remember that the source terms are remaining identical and they get cancelled out in the process. You can similarly write it similarly write a correction equation for v component of momentum or y momentum equation that is easy to write and then comes the main approximation of simple in the next step but before we write down we just write these two equations in compact form once more for easy reference. So, these are the two equations, the equations in terms of corrections. So, these equations are now going to be dramatically simplified. In the simple algorithm, the correction terms coming from all the neighbors are set to 0, the contribution is completely neglected. What does that mean? That means that the equations above will be dramatically simplified. Let us call this as say d, a term d or u i plus half j, say d u i plus half j. and similarly
So, these are the two equations now which are substantially simplified. Now, remember that we are going to satisfy divergence v equal to 0 and where are we going to satisfy it? We are actually going to satisfy it at the scalar control volume at the center of which the pressure is sitting. You have the velocity u i plus half j here, you have the velocity u i minus half j over here, p i j plus half, v i j minus half. So, the divergence v can be easily written in terms of these four velocities like this. this is u and that should ideally be equal to 0. Now, how can you achieve that? You can easily achieve that now if this is the correct velocity field. So, if you substitute the correct velocity field, this will be exactly achieved. However, when you are using the estimate of the guess velocities, that means with the stars, you are actually going to generate some kind of a residual on the right hand side. Okay. So, if you take a difference between these two equations, you will get the velocities in terms of their corrections and that will be equal to that residual that you have generated from the gas velocities. So, in terms of the corrections, this equation will be looking like this. Here above, I have used the finite difference form, but since we are discussing in the context of finite volume, we will write the discrete continuity equation in finite volume form. And remember that we are taking a difference between the correct velocity and estimated velocity fields. If we do that, we generate an equation in terms of the velocity corrections and on the right hand side we will have a mass source generated. Why is it? Because the u star and v star fields will generate a residual mass defect. That means, if you were to substitute in this equation, if you were to substitute, uh, if in this equation we ignore the dash terms and we are replacing it with the stars, then you will be able to get a residual on the right hand side. When you replace the dash with no, neither star or dash, that means you are uh, using the correct velocity field, you will get a 0 on the right hand side. Now, if you take a difference between those two equations, you get all the dashed velocities on the left hand side because they are the corrections and you get the mass source on the right hand side. So, that is what the equation finally boils down to. Now, you have already learned how to express these velocity components u's and v's in terms of the the pressure corrections through the simple algorithm. Right. Now, that can be repeated for all the velocities here. We showed it for u i plus half j and v i j plus half. You can similarly do it for u i minus half j and v i j minus half. And then finally, comes the pressure correction equation. So, you will be able to show with a little bit of homework.
So, this is how the pressure correction equation will look like. So, what is it like? If you watch very carefully, it is a pressure Poisson equation. Remember that once you solve for the P dash field, then from there you can also obtain the U dash and V dash and therefore, you can obtain the corrected velocity fields. Now, this has to be done in an iterative manner because you are starting with a guess value of P star, from there you are going to the guess values of U and V and then from there you are able to generate the corrections the corrections first in pressure, then in velocity and then you come back and check whether you have reached the zero divergence condition for the velocity at each and every cell in the field. That is what you check. So, if you find that the divergence has not gone down substantially, then you have to repeat this loop all over again till the divergence comes down for all cells below a certain predefined small value epsilon. So, this is how you should be able to reach a converged pressure and velocity distribution in the field. Now, because you are ignoring certain terms, there is a possibility that the pressure equation may find it difficult to converge because you have dropped out the neighbor influence. So, that may need use of certain under relaxation parameters. Again remember that this is the basic form of the simple algorithm, there are more advanced forms and there are also forms available for unsteady form of equations. With this we will end this lecture. Thank you.